This project has been a 30 year dream of mine, so when I got my hands on this little bus, I had one speed. So everything I'm about to show you, I did do myself within about eight weeks. The body itself is in really good condition, actually. It just needed a lot of cosmetic work. I rolled the exterior in a light gray exterior house paint by Bear, And then the four panels there along the sides, I did a faux wood grain technique. And I did the same thing on the back door as well. And I'm just really happy with the contrast. I sealed the roof with Henry's silicone roof sealant. And then of course the bumper, the grill, and the wheels, which you already saw with a black Rust-Oleum. I just couldn't leave that back panel plain, so I added that scrolled wooden piece and then painted it with the faux wood technique as well. By far the most grueling part of this conversion was removing those 13-year-old Baked On stickers. And there I am, full amateur display. I don't know how to get that out of there, so you know what? It's just what we got. That's what we're going to go with. You're going to find here shortly that I have this weird obsession with black birds. That's a raven that I have mounted on my header. I carved it out of cork, polyurethaned it, and mounted it to the front. We do live in raven country and we're raven fans, but truth is I just have a thing for black birds. And yes, that is a hanging plant. I didn't video any of my bus conversion, so I have to show you just a few before picks. The prior owner had already removed most of the seats, so I was left with ripping up the indoor-outdoor carpeting, and then I found this really nice flooring at Home Depot. It's a heavy peel-and-stick vinyl, waterproof, super user-friendly, just score, snap, place. I did add extra adhesive to every piece, probably didn't need to, but I did. I did my steps in a peel and stick vinyl tile. Very durable, looks really pretty. And then to the left, my entranceway, I found these two wooden posts in the yard of an antique shop that I go to, uh, full of mud. So I snatched those up, I mounted them to this scrolled art piece that I found at Hobby Lobby. I added the glass doorknobs to each post and just really happy with my entrance. Everything in the bus is fixed and stationary. It's either Velcroed, glued in some way, so I can just jump in it and go. This is really a simple conversion. I didn't build up or build out. I bought pieces that, that I you know could function for what I needed them to do. And I really just created this space to fit my needs. And that's long weekend camping trips with friends, tailgating my kids big college football games, and jaunt around town, which I do a lot of. This isn't something that I just pull out on a special occasion. I'm in my bus a good bit on my days off. And it was really important for me to keep that old vintage bus feel so I didn't cover up my windows. Um, I'll show you my curtains in a little bit, but I just built it to really just fit my needs. So starting out here in the kitchen, I found this piece on Craigslist for less than $100. Of course, I distressed it and painted it and put new knobs on it. I needed those longer legs to clear the back heater there on the left. My water tank there on the right, and in the middle there is my trash can. And space for future solar power source. I use the bungee cords there to keep the drawer secure while I'm driving. I have a one stove burner there on the left when I have hookup, but when I don't I have a, a double gas burner that I can use. One of my favorite features in this bus is this $15 bowl that I found and I just love it. I dropped a hole in it, added the drain, the faucet, used some pool tubing to drop it down through the flooring, and then I had this simple uh, foot pump for my water supply. To the right here, I mounted these three baskets where I keep spices, kitchen utensils, salt, pepper, some honey, some dish liquid, sponges, kitchen towels, things like that. And then some napkins, small cutting board, and snacks. Very important. This basket down here, I keep larger cutting boards, my plates, bowls, cups, more kitchen towels, paper towels, 
This piece here I love because I can sit it on my sink and I can sit my bowl or plate there which opens up space there in the center for whatever I'm preparing. In my drawers I keep a lot of batteries, tape, magnets, things that I could use, uh, foil, plastic wrap, kitchenware. In the center here I keep all of my utensils. And then to the right, I have my toothpaste, toothbrush, and my little cutoff drawer there. And then of course my lotions, potions, the makeup, and things like that. So I have plenty of space. So that's the kitchen area. And then to the left, I mounted this shower caddy where I keep my coffee, hot chocolate, tea bags, some lime for drinks, my mugs. And then here I found a retro cooler online made by Coleman, love it. I mounted a cutting board on the top so that I can sit a hot pot while something else is cooking. I just figured that gave me a little bit of extra space. And then we're gonna move on to the bedroom. I built this frame for a twin. I could have gotten a full one here, but I really wanted to leave space for my potty chair, which I'll show you here in a minute, and my nightstand. And here I keep some books, some good smell and spray, some extra lighting. I have a couple deck of cards there, my tissues, and then I keep a bath towel and some wipes there on the bottom. The basket there on the right, I keep extra lighting and some candles. And this little beauty here is one of my favorite pieces in the bus. I found it at Goodwill for $20. I painted it to match the interior of the bus. I keep my pots and cans and a little coffee maker and some other things. I could have enclosed this area under the bus, which a lot of people do, but it was just so important for me for this trunk to be seen because I just, I, I think that it's the centerpiece. When you walk into the bus, that's what you see. And I just love it. It's just perfect. At the foot of the bed, I found this $5 three-tiered shelf that fit perfectly there. So I painted it, distressed it, and it holds my extra blankets and radio and books and other little tchotchkes. Okay guys, can we just take a moment because this is my favorite part of my bus and that's the bathroom. This is a $10 chair that I cut down placed a toilet seat on it. The lid did not fit with the chair, so I made my own. And I keep bags of kitty litter and that little container underneath my toiletries there on the right. And I just refill it as needed. This has been such a lifesaver, especially the beginning of the pandemic when no one had their bathrooms open. And here we have the second bedroom, uh, my living room and dining room. I found a $70 sofa at one of my thrift shops. I left the frame at the store and took the cushions home. Found a really pretty duvet cover and a fabric that I liked and covered the cushions and attached to this chair here that I found for $10. Sprayed it with fabric dye and mounted a seat belt to it. And my little chandelier here is a lampshade I had laying around that I ripped apart and wrapped it in fairy lights. This cute little table here is perfect for me, but when I meet up with a friend for dinner, which I love to do, I uh, pull out this tray that I keep on top of the wheel well there and gives me a lot more space for two people. I should mention that everything in the bus is mounted securely to the floor without brackets. My small table there is attached to the sofa frame with a small bungee cord so I can move it at any time. Underneath the sofa is a good bit of space for storage and stuff. I keep my ottoman kind of stuff there and then this basket holds extra blankets and just other things that I want to store. When I go shopping, oftentimes I'll use that basket for my groceries so that they don't go flying everywhere. I keep a lot of lighting throughout the bus, so I always have a ton of backup batteries that I keep in the kitchen area. Going around the perimeter, just show you different lighting that I have, but the uh, shelving I added, and there are 12 foot pieces of barn wood. I really like it because it holds all of my little tchotchkes and my decorative pieces. Every piece in my bus does have a special meaning to me or story, but I will spare you of that. You're welcome. You know, I've done a lot of projects in my time and despite the crazy amount of hours and late nights that I've put into this space, 
it still was just so much fun and so enjoyable. And I think one of the main reasons for that is because I didn't have a standard set of rules to follow, a standard set of guidelines, preconceived ideas of what people are doing. It's a bus, it's a 22 year old bus, there are no rules. So I could be just as crazy and creative as I wanted to be, and it was okay. I have a $10 potty chair that I cut down and decoupaged with polka dotted paper, and it's okay. Anyway, so here you can see with all the different lighting I have throughout the bus, it just gives a nice cozy feel for in the evenings. For the record, all those stickers that are on my electrical panel are held on with magnets because I'm still traumatized from removing the 13 year old stickers from the outside. The inside header here I covered with PVC tiles. They came in a very high gloss, which I wasn't expecting, so I lightly sanded over it to get rid of that and then feathered it with a little bit of gray paint and that gave me the distress look I was looking for. And I did the same thing on the back there. You've gotta know by now I couldn't leave them blank. Kinda of last minute, I decided that I wanted to have a beam effect on the ceiling, so I found this peel and stick crown molding that was incredibly easy to put up. And I think it just adds a really cool vibe. By the way, if you like what I've done in the bus, please feel free to subscribe and follow along for what I have coming up next. I use this lighting here all the time when I drive at night because this is a 22 year old bus and I just don't have that standard lighting that most modern vehicles have on their dash area. As for privacy, all my windows are tinted. So I'm really happy about that. That was a nice bonus when I purchased the bus but I also made curtains for nighttime for full privacy. And because I wanted something with a fringe, I bought three throws. I cut them up and mounted them on the wooden rods that I have just underneath my shelving. And this tapestry hangs behind my seat and I can pull that over and that blocks off the front. And real quick, let me show you the garage. I have not polyurethaned my back door yet, so just overlook that. It's so nice to have all this space. I built the frame of my bed high enough to fit another cooler and more. And I still have plenty of space for camping gear and whatever else. I might need depending on what I'm doing and I keep a bag of tools over there to the right and that's the garage far in the video thank you and kudos because I'm very aware of my technical shortcomings so I appreciate you taking the time to watch and not pass judgment I hope that you'll continue to follow me and subscribe to my channel I have so many more creative projects to share with you as I scoot around town on my little bus to below honey to my local thrift shops finding really cool eclectic pieces and transforming them and introducing them into my home. From bus find to finish is what this channel's about, so I hope that you'll come along with me. Otherwise, I'm just driving around town in a bus talking to myself, and that's just weird. I do it all the time. But I sure would like the company. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you soon.